God's calling was exclusively for the Jews. Because the Jews were the chosen people, it was felt that God's calling was exclusively for them. And then, the question was also, is Christianity subordinated to Judaism? Or is it open to anyone? The answer is found in the first reading today. The first reading from Acts of the Apostles records a significant understanding in this regard. As Peter proclaims the good news within the household of a Gentile army officer, Cornelius. The Gentile received the good news. And what happened? The Holy Spirit came upon them, the entire household. And they began to speak in tongues and to proclaim the greatness of God. So you can see that salvation is not just limited to the Jews, the chosen people. Otherwise, you would not have become Christian. I wouldn't have been one. But because it was meant to be universal. That is why today you are Christians. The Jews are also Christians, some of them. The Arabs are Christians, some of them. Africans are Christians, Asians, Americans, all of them. The salvation is universal. In fact, it is cosmic. The whole world, the whole creation is to receive salvation that came from our Lord Jesus Christ. So the descent of the Holy Spirit on the household of Cornelius was a clear declaration about the universality of God's salvation. It showed that we are all created in the image and likeness of God. All of us, you can see the uniformity in our physical structure. Any human being of the nearly 7 billion human beings in the world, you can see the great work of God, how he created us. We look alike, we have similar physical structures. He created us in that manner, in his image and likeness. No life is more precious than the other. Our accidental differences in race, age, gender, nationality, color, and all that do not place one individual over another. You cannot say you are better than another person. If you say you are better than another human being, I want to tell you that you do not know God. You are better than nobody. God created us equal. And so we should remember that. Peter asserted in Acts chapter 10 verse 35 that God has no favorites. And anyone who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. That is the intention of God. He created us equal. We are all his sons and daughters. And whoever fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. By religious regulations, cultural prohibitions, and social restrictions, Peter, a Jew, ought to have had nothing in common with Cornelius, a pagan, a pagan, that they should have had nothing to do with one another. But having been directed in a vision, Peter became an inclusive person. When we say somebody is an inclusive person, it means somebody that is able to embrace other people. He is inclusive. Peter became inclusive. Unlike before, when he was exclusive. Exclusive in the sense that, oh, salvation is only for people of the chosen race. Salvation should not go beyond the frontiers of the Jewish nation. That was exclusive. But upon his conversion and the vision he saw, he became an inclusive person. Namely, he was able to embrace everyone, like Jesus did. I always tell people that Jesus died on the cross with his hands like this, in order to embrace the whole of humanity. 
to embrace all of us, that nobody should be excluded or feel excluded. You see how God shaped the mind of Peter to see people as human beings and not through ethnic lenses. God shaped him to see every human being and respect every human being, but not to see human beings through ethnic lenses. And this is what I think we do a lot in our country, Nigeria. If you go somewhere, the first question you are likely to be asked is, what is your tribe? And they will begin to judge you from that moment from the answer you give. If you say you are from the north, they judge you in a particular way. If you say you are from the south or the southeast or southwest, they judge you in a particular way. This is looking at people with through ethnic lenses, which is not so helpful. Look at people because they are human beings. Look at people and see their humanity and then our common humanity. The lesson today is that God's love is boundless. He has no favorites and shows no partiality, but with great tenderness, love and patience, he draws all to himself despite our social, economic and cultural backgrounds. When we meet like this as Christians, cleansed and united by the waters of baptism, all differences and prejudices should melt away. Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 to 28 says, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. In a city like Abuja, big city, and other big cities like Lagos, Kaduna, Ibadan, Onitsha, the relationship of those living there could easily be very artificial. It could just be merely one of people cohabiting, the uh, cohabitants, that is, they just forced to live together. Instead of being friends or brothers and sisters. It is no accident that God has placed us to live together. That we are gathered here is no accident. It is by God's providence. God wants it so that we should be together as brothers and sisters. Irrespective of our historical origins and differences. We must learn to accommodate one another and live in the peace, solidarity and harmony that marked our traditional African communities. In those days, our African elders, our African people lived a communal life in a way that everybody was catered for. Just like in the early church, when they were there responding to the needs of every individual. In the African tra traditional society, we didn't have uh, nursing homes for old people. You took care of your old mama or papa at home. The extended family came to offer a hand. If a woman gave birth, relations were there to support. Even when there was no hospital, they couldn't go anywhere. They were there to support. All I'm saying is that we need that today more than ever. We need each other. And we must be united in a more purposeful manner. St. John in the second reading and in the gospel text reminds us of how much Christ loved us up to the point of giving his life for us. As God's love is very generous and available to all without discrimination, God does not discriminate. You see how his reign falls on all. Did you see God giving rain to this man in his house and refusing the other neighbor? He gives to everybody, his sun, his moon, the stars all shine on us. We enjoy all these gifts from God. He doesn't discriminate. So we must also love without boundaries 
and discrimination. We are taught today that love conquers all. That love, with love we can do everything. In the family, we can live in peace and harmony. In the place of work, when there is love, there will be no conflict, no tension. There will be progress, there will be harmony. Even in the government, if there is love, love of neighbors, love of the people you are supposed to serve, love of Nigeria, you will see that there will be honesty, that governance will be characterized by honesty and the genuine service for the common good, if there is love. So today we have been asked to cultivate that spirit of love, to allow the Holy Spirit to plant love into our hearts so that love will grow and bear fruit in our lives. To all of you, the 307 candidates for confirmation today, I congratulate you. God bless you. May you continue to grow in the Lord.